Ulcerations of the oral mucosa are classified as aphthous and non-aphthous. When considering aphthe and aphthous ulcerations, idiopathic aphthe must be distinguished from aphthe that are secondary to a general pathology, which must be systematically sought in those co conditions associated with recurrent forms of the condition. The basic lesion is the aphtha, characterized by a specific lesion composed of a yellowish fibrinous base associated with a peripheral erythema. The disease that is characterized by the presence of aphthe is aphthosis. It may be simple or complex depending on lesion severity and the number of recurrences. Three clinical forms of aphthe are distinguished. Minor aphthe, which are the common form, are small, often somewhat oval shaped, less than one centimeter across, and heal within a week. Major aphthae are between one and five centimeters across, take much longer to heal, and sometimes several months. Finally, herpetiform aphthae are small, deriving their name from their resemblance to herpetic ulcers. Generally, there are numerous herpetiform aphthae and they heal in around one week. Simple idiopathic aphthosis is characterized by one to three aphthae, which heal in one to two weeks. Treatment is based principally on treatment of the aphtha. Recurrent aphthosis is characterized by more than three outbreaks per year with more or less severe forms. In this case, systematic investigations for uh, an associated disease such as Besset disease or secondary aphthosis must be conducted and in addition, recurrences must also be managed. Treatment of simple idiopathic aphthosis may be based on a cauterizing agent such as trichloroacetic acid, TCA. Clobotesol cream can also be used on common aphthe. This facilitates rapid healing and has an analgesic effect. Treatment of herpetiform aphthe is based on local corticosteroid therapy with a better methasone or lidocaine gel. Step one and two analgesics may also be recommended. Treatment of giant aphthe may be based on local corticosteroid therapy, but short-term oral corticosteroid therapy may also be suggested. An explanatory factor must be sought for recurrent aphthosis. A laboratory workup must be run with systematic iron, folate and vitamin B12 assays. A complete blood count must be performed, particularly to research neutropenia and agranulocytosis as aphthous lesions are complications of these conditions. In the first instance, a gastrointestinal workup must be conducted, centered on the history taking to research symptoms such as pain after meals and diarrhea, which can cause suspicions of chronic inflammatory bowel disease. Finally, the history taking must also explore the medication taken by the patient since some drugs such as, for example, nicorandil or methotrexate can induce aphthous lesions. The diagnosis of Besset disease is one to bear in mind even if this disease remains rare. The diagnosis of Besset disease will be based on the presence of oral aphthe with at least three outbreaks per year, more or less accompanied by genital aphthosis, ocular lesions in the form of uveitis, and cutaneous lesions in the form of erythema nodosum or a pseudo 
folliculitis pustular rash. Finally, a pathogy test can be applied. In Besset disease, it will be positive in most cases. First line treatment of recurrent aphthosis is based on colchicine. One milligram per day, long term, with a reassessment every three months and a minimum treatment period of one year with gradual dose reduction. In addition, colchicine treatment can be combined with a 1200 milligram per day pentoxifiline when colchicine monotherapy is not sufficiently effective. Of course, if these treatments are unsuccessful, thalidomide or diceulone can be given. Of course, corticosteroids can be used to treat aphthe during periods of recurrence. In a case of secondary aphthosis, tests for a primary herpes infection should be run. Exceptionally, aphthous ulcerations may be the primary manifestation of HIV infection. Some vitamin deficiencies can also be noted in cases of HIV infection. In particular, here a folate deficiency characterised by a chronic aphthous ulceration. Of course, pernicious anemia may also be suggested. A vitamin B12 assay must be run. In these cases, ulcerations have a more herpetiform appearance associated with significant erythema. Drug-induced ulcerations produce aphthous ulcerations with little erythema. Here, in the case of ulceration, secondary to treatment with nicorandil. An overdose of methotrexate will often be accompanied by oral ulcerations, and aphthous ulcerations are also very frequently observed in cases where mTOR inhibitor-targeted therapies have been used. Treatment of these drug-induced iatrogenic ulcerations is based on local corticosteroid therapy, but also in some cases on low-level laser therapy. Finally, in cases of aphthous ulcerations, neutropenia should be borne in mind. Neutropenic ulcerations are characteristic. They have a deep, punched-out appearance. This neutropenia may be isolated or associated with injury to other lineages and the characteristic appearance of deep ulceration without peripheral erythema will always be found. Rectification of the neutropenia will lead to healing of the lesions. Sometimes recurrent aphthae are observed in children associated with fever. Marshall's syndrome or PFAPA syndrome should be considered. This is characterised by fever, adenopathy, pharyngitis and recurrent aphthae. Attacks can be managed with local corticosteroid therapy and tonsillectomy may be suggested in severe cases. Neutrophilic dermatoses of the oral mucosa are rare. They manifest principally on the skin, but the oral mucosa may display signs of sweet syndrome or Sneddon-Wilkinson disease. In this case, pustules similar to that observed on the tongue will be detected, as well as ulcerations which may be mistaken for aphthae, but which heal much more rapidly. Bednar aphthosis is a particular case of aphthae specific to infants. These aphthae are located posteriorly, certainly secondary to trauma caused by suckling. A specific form of aphthosis, eruptive lingual papillitis, which corresponds to ulcerations centred on the filiform papillae of the tongue. A background of infection has been suggested in eruptive papillitis. In all cases, the condition will also affect family or close contacts, hence the name eruptive familial 
papillitis. It involves ulcerations as painful as aphthe, but which are very short-lived, persisting for two to three days. <laughs>